and we're back. You're listening to the Talking Boxing with Billy C. Show. Glad you could join us. Uh, I tell you what, I'll be shocked if we get this show in today. Uh, it is vicious out there right now, and the lights have been flickering on and off here in the studio, so um, I'm pre-warning you now. Uh, but uh, anyway, hey, if you're not following us on uh, Twitter, please do so. It's at Talking Boxing. That's T-A-L-K-I-N-B-O-X-I-N-G. And while you're at it, join our Facebook groups. we got several of them, but Talking Boxing with Billy C is a good start. Um, last night on Friday Night Fights, which took place on Wednesday, um, in a uh, title elimination bout, uh, Michael Farinas improved to 38-4 and four with four draws, 30 of his wins coming by knockout, when he stopped uh, previously undefeated Mark, who wasn't too sharp last night, John Davis, uh, who loses for the first time in his career, 18-1 and one now on, and five knockouts, took place at Foxwoods. Um, listen, man, I, Teddy Atlas was saying all night, uh, this is what happens when you fight you know, lesser opposition and you're feeding your, your uh, fighter a cupcakes after cupcake after cupcake. I've been saying it for, for years. You know, I, what happens is a fighter just never gets a chance to get better. You know, and, and they, they think that they're great. They're used to fighting, you know, the same level of opponent, even in some cases the same style of opponent. And then all of a sudden you put him in with a real fighter, which is no world beater for Enos. No disrespect to... to to uh, Hammer Fist, he, he's no world beater. And from the opening bell, he beat the snot out of uh, Davis. You know, Davis is laughing and trying to, uh, you know, counterpunch him and, and, you know, use his jab and stuff. And I'm not saying that Davis doesn't possess skill. He's got hand speed. Uh, he's got a good jab. He seems to be fluent when he moves. Uh, the problem was simple. He just never faced uh, that level of opposition yet, and it showed. And, you know, with his team overprotecting him, they basically should be the ones that are blamed for the loss. You know, uh, I love it when a kid comes in like Farinas, uh, who's not expected to win. And just because they're, they're facing the, the hometown guy, so to speak, if you know, he wasn't hometown, but I meant, you know, the promoter's guy or whatever, that they're supposed to just go in and lay down and, and let him beat him. Uh, it didn't happen. Uh, cut over the eye. uh uh, you know, uh, beating him up pretty bad. And then finally, at 59 seconds uh, into, uh, uh, into the eighth round, uh, Steve Smoger stops the fight and then gives, uh, you know, uh, right, right after he stops it, he, he, he puts his arms around Mark Two Sharp Davis, rubs his you-know-what on him, and then gives him a big old kiss on his cheek. I almost threw the F up, man. I almost threw up, man. I, I, I can't believe that this guy gets away with the shit that he gets away with. All right? It's bad enough that people think he's a really good referee. I don't know why. I don't know why. What has he done? That, that you know, it's not like he, he, he the guy, it, 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 you know, Sometimes he lets fights go too far. He always, uh, you know, he always seems to to be in the way of the camera. You know, I, I'm not going to pick on him because he's got no neck and he wears a belt. That is, he can wear a tie and a belt as the same thing because he's, you know, his pants are all the way up to his friggin' neck. You know, I'm not going to make fun of the, the fact that he looks like a troll and he doesn't even look human. You know, I'm not going to bring up the fact that he got disbarred or, or that, you know, he's run into all these problems, that he's a power-hungry little piece of crap. I'm not going to bring up any of that. I'm just going to focus on the job that he did last night, and it was pathetic. And not only that, not only that, what's fresh in my mind with Steve Smoger was the horrific job he did and the one-sided bias job that he did uh, again it, for the Bernard Hopkins fight when he fought Carol Murat. And I will never forget him patting a fighter on the head, uh, you know, pushing and roughing up Carol Murat and uh, favoring uh, Bernard Hopkins throughout the whole fight. Now, listen, you know, I, I, I talked, I'm not going to mention the guy's name, but I talked to a, a, a New York State uh, referee uh, recently, and we had a, a, a conversation. And one of the things that this guy strives himself and strives to do and prides himself on is that he removes himself from the fighters and, and getting to know them personally and being a fan, so to speak. Why? Because he doesn't want to be biased when he's refereeing. I love that. 
I, I mean, I feel bad for the guy because he's such a boxing fan, and he's actually, he told me that he's going back and he's hes uh, brushing up on his history. He's, he's got himself a bunch of old ring magazines and he's reading up on that stuff. But, but I respect that because you look at Steve Smoger, he obviously respects and likes Bernard Hopkins. No, I don't have a problem with that. But when you're refereeing a fight, you can't be showing your favoritism. It was it was out and out, terrible what he did there, and it was nauseating what he did last night. I'm dying to hear what Larry Hazard says, and we're going to be hearing about that in about nine minutes. Uh, so uh, we'll come up with that in a little bit. Uh, in the junior uh, lightweight division, um, which is uh, now uh, the home of uh, Billy the Kid Orman. Um, he uh, won a unanimous decision over uh, Alberto Garza in a typical boring Billy Dib fight. I, I mean, really, is there anybody out there that would actually pay money to see this guy fight? I, you know, and no wonder why 50 Cent got him so quickly and easily. Um, listen, no disrespect to Billy Dib. He's just a, a fighter that does absolutely nothing for me, and I don't know about anybody else. 98, 91, 96, 93, twice with a way the judges scored it. Um, I told you guys about this kid. He's a junior welterweight, undefeated, Ryan Blue Chip Martin. He's 6-0 and now with three knockouts. There's a real deal fighter. And 50 Cent has got himself uh, a future uh, uh, champion there. Uh, he beat Matthew Backer, who only lost for the second time. Matt uh, is now 4-2-1. Uh, all three judges scored it the same, 40-36. to 36. Now, I know Matthew Backer. He's from uh, New Mexico. I've, I've seen and actually called uh, uh, one of his fights before. Um, he's crude and rude, uh, and he needs to, uh, you know, polish his uh, skills a little bit. Uh, but uh, Ryan Blue Chip Martin showed uh, why uh, uh, people are so high on him. Uh, great kid to keep an eye on. In the uh, junior middleweight division, uh, junior Sugar Boy Yonan improved to 5-0 and with four knockouts when he won a four-round unanimous decision over Azamat uh, Yumazada, who drops to 0-4, uh, <clears throat> a typical uh, Lou DiBella uh, opponent. And uh, also uh, another Lou DiBella opponent, uh, junior welterweight uh, Lewis Cruz improves to eight and zero with four knockouts when he won a, a six round unanimous decision over Ryan Pacquiao, who drops to one and three. Yeah, you, you see the you see the 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 pattern. You know, talk about overprotecting fighters. Uh, Lou DiBella uh, clearly uh, has uh, uh, you know overprotects all of his fighters. And, uh, you know, if you're looking to beat the shit out of a, 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 one of a fighter, like a, main, a fighter that's got a main promoter, uh, if I'm, if I'm a, uh, a promoter or a manager out there, I look at Lou DiBella's fighters because uh, none of them really get tested. They're all overprotected, and they're created for those upper echelon uh, matches where, you know, a title's on the line, where Lou gets paid, the fighter gets paid, and they don't have a chance in hell. Uh, so that's what took place last night. Uh, also, uh, what took out place last night, which was more entertaining uh, than uh, the majority of that fight card, uh, was uh, Nicholas Walters. Now, I've told you about the Axe Man. Nicholas Walters is a is a uh, world champion. He's the WBA featherweight world champion, and uh, he's undefeated, twenty four zero with twenty knockouts. He's one of those kinds of guys uh, that nobody really wants to fight. He doesn't really have a lot of money behind him. Um, and, uh, you know, it's like he's got to uh, scratch and fight for every step of the way. Well, he's calling out Nonito Donaire and uh, said, you know, Nonito Donaire, uh, why does he run from me, man? I'll chop him down like he like he's nothing. And the truth of the matter is, is I would love to see that fight. I really would. I think that would be uh, a, a really good uh, matchup for sure. Hey, something that's definitely going to be happening, August 9th, Golden Boy, uh, is uh, uh, going to be uh, putting on the, the the card that we all hawk, talked about. The main event is Danny Garcia against Rod Salika. Contrary to the WBC, who thinks who the F they are, uh, saying that, nope, that's not who Danny Garcia is going to fight. He's going to fight this guy. We're telling him to fight this guy. And Oscar De La Hoya said, hey, I said, screw you to Richard Schaefer. I said, screw you to all his cronies. I'm saying, screw you to two you to WBC. I'm telling Danny Garcia to fight Rod Salika. That's the deal. And he backed it up. 
uh, by holding uh, a press conference uh, today uh, to, to, to uh, talk about the fight that's been made official, which was actually made official last week. But uh, Danny Garcia against Rod Salika, uh, August 9th at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, also on the card, Saddam Ali, uh, Daniel Jacobs, Edgar Santana Banana, and Lamont, you dummy, Peterson. So uh, uh, all of that's happening on uh, August 9th. Uh, another thing that I wanted to mention real quick uh, was uh, Yoriokas Gamboa has announced that uh, he is moving back down to 130 pounds. Uh, you know, maybe this is a smart move. He really was reluctant because he felt that he had more opportunities at lightweight, uh, but uh, but he realizes that, you know, those extra... Uh, uh, those extra pounds are just a, a little too much uh, for him. And even his uh, last opponent, who actually beat him, Terrence Crawford, said, hey, man, this guy punches. I think, he, first of all, he says, I think he, he's going to do a lot better uh, back at uh, 130. He says, but let me tell you something. He punches harder than anybody else that I've been punched at with 135. So at 130, uh, I think it's a smart move. Uh, for uh, Yuri Orcas Gamboa. And this is coming from Terrence Crawford, uh, the guy who just beat him. So we'll keep you uh, posted on uh, when he's going to be fighting again. Uh, it looks like uh, uh, he's looking for a winner uh, of a fight coming up uh, in a couple of weeks. So uh, uh, we'll keep you posted on that. Now, I do have some news uh, about uh, Peter Kid Chocolate Quinlan's uh, next mandatory fight, which actually might not be a bad one. Uh, we got uh, an addition to Team Mayweather we'll talk about. Um, the talk about uh, um, King Arthur Abraham's next fight. Um, the uh, also a fight that uh, uh, Eddie Hearn in Matchroom Sport is working on. A guy that was uh, uh, interviewed uh, working out at uh, uh, Mayweather's gym uh, is a guy that we basically introduced everybody to, man. And and it's funny because I didn't even realize that he was the brother. We I, I could have sworn we asked him and he said no. Uh, but I got a bunch of that to talk about, including the Subway Sandwich Mike Lee when he's coming back. Uh, we got uh, Larry Hazard coming up here in about two minutes. We got Dax Khan scheduled in a half hour. All of that stuff is coming up in about Broadcasting in all corners of the globe on the web and radio. He would scoff at a stretch of that man, I would think. You're listening to Talkin' Boxing with Billy C. From upstate New York in the good old U.S. of A. Boxing is here to stay because we are here to stay. The best two hours of boxing talk on the airwaves. Hey, fight fans, check out KOFantasyBoxing.com. KO Fantasy Boxing is boxing's only trademarked fantasy game. Check it out, www.KOFantasyBoxing.com. Select your own gym, your own fighters, track them through a season that can last from three months to a year, depending upon which league you join. You got to check this out, man, www.KOFantasyBoxing.com. Join it today. Again, www.KOFantasyBoxing.com. And tell them Billy C sent ya. Now back to Talkin' Boxing with Billy C, the only radio host man enough to take a punch from Mike Tyson. Wait a minute, man. Hold, hold, hold on there. Jeremy, man, uh, I need you to take this one, all right? Wait, what? What? No way. I, I, I can't do this. Need I remind you I'm Billy C, damn it? Now put on that mustache and get in there. Hey, hey, look at me. I'm Billy C. <laughs> The undisputed heavyweight champion of boxing talk radio. It's Talking Boxing with Billy C. Test one, two. Test one, two. My fellow Americans, good evening. Welcome back to Talking Boxing with Billy C. It's great to be here discussing the sweet science with everybody. I love boxing. I love talking boxing. It's what I do. Um, Bill. Oh, wait, what, uh, Bill. Why, why are you interrupting yeah, um, me? What? Wrong, wrong. What's wrong, the problem? Billy what? C. I did not have. We're gonna, we're gonna have to ask you. To speech. Be, what do you mean, wrong, Billy C? What's going sorry. on here? Fine, I'll go. I just wanted to talk some boxing on TPS Radio. Got that? That's all I wanted to do. I don't need your damn show. I'll get my own. Talking wrestling with the other Billy C. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. I've always been a Hulkamaniac anyway. <laughs> Podcast in live, brother. Welcome back 
to Talking Boxing with Billy C on the mighty tpsradio.net, brother. What you gonna do, brother? And we're back. You're listening to the Talking Boxing with Billy C show. You're watching us on BillyCBoxing.com. And uh, I'm just going to get right to the point. You know, in the chat room right now, everybody's saying, uh, oh, good, Larry's coming on. Uh, Larry's the man. Uh, can't wait to get Larry fired up. Billy C, get Larry fired up. Well, I am going to get Larry fired up right now. Joining me is Larry Hazard. What's up, my man? Hey, Billy. What's, what's happening, man? Oh, man. You, you are the guy that I thought of last night. I, I hope you saw it and, and just smiled and knew that I was going to talk to you about it. But right at the stoppage last night on Friday Night Fights, when uh, Mark Tushop Johnson got stopped and it was waved off uh, by uh, uh, your favorite guy, Steve Smoger, uh, not only did he rub his privates all over the guy, he kisses him on his cheek. I thought I was going to throw up, Larry. I mean, this guy. guy Hey, is guy, a disgrace. He's a you, disgrace. Let me tell you something. <laughs> this guy has taken refereeing. See, once a, once it becomes all show business, then it's time for this guy to move on to something else. Because you see, you cannot that that mindset, that type of mindset, is is not needed and is not wanted in the sport of boxing. You cannot use the sport. It galls me, man, to see someone with impunity. See, this is with impunity. There's nobody sitting at ringside that has the courage or the confidence, you understand, to challenge this guy. All, even in New York, you know, to ch- the, 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 the new commissioner in New York has him. He's going to be the lead guy doing the seminar in September, okay? See, and, 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 and this is not a personal thing, but it just galls me, man, when I sit and I watch, you know, the refereeing profession taken to the level that it is being taken to with this guy through his, his salesmanship with kissing the commentator's asses and being the Glad hand, a nice guy. Oh, he's such a great guy. This, this is not about that. You have fighters' lives at danger. And then when you use refereeing all for self-aggrandizement, man, it galls me to no end. And so, this guy has to be stopped. And no one has the courage sitting at ringside to put a stop to this nonsense. I, I tell you, man. Hey, by the way, Larry, if all of a sudden I lose you and we go black, I'm in the middle of a, a, a really bad... Na- I'm surprised we still have power here in the studio because it's so nasty out there with the storm. But um, listen, man, I, I agree with you 100%. Uh, you know, did you, I, I just... Oh, 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 oh Billy, did you, see him, did you see him on Friday Night Fight? Uh, the other, you know, last Friday, where he stands in the middle of the ring... Can I start now, Teddy? Did you see that? <laughs> He's playing the Teddy Atlas. I, Teddy Atlas. And, and, you know, I like Teddy Atlas. So, you know, Teddy's in a different field. But Teddy, Teddy was just talking. And he can hear these guys. You know, uh, Teddy had just finished showering him with w- what a great referee he was. And so he's standing before the bell rings, okay, and, you know, the referee looks over at the timekeeper where he gets his cue to start the fight. So he looks over at Teddy Atlas. Can I start, Teddy? Can I start, Teddy? You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm saying, oh boy, this guy. You know what I mean? Well, he wants the brown. He wants the brownie points. He knows he gets the brownie points, and they want him to say how great he is. I mean, that's what he did. Listen, the 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 thing is, first of all, Teddy. I, my my, I like Teddy's uh, metaphors and his accolades and all those things. I mean, you know, when he's when he's uh, analogies and stuff. Um, I, I like it. My my only hang up with with Teddy is his opinion is the only opinion. He doesn't re- respect anyone else's. You're wrong if you don't agree with him. That's my hang up with him. Okay, so so he's not. But I agreed with several things he was saying last night, and same kind of stuff we've been talking about uh, over and over and over. Like for an example. Uh, May 